Hello there, my fellow space explorers, and welcome back to our series of lore on interesting places and planets in the 40k galaxy. After checking the votes on the last video, it seems that a lot of you are still a bunch of heretics. But you voted for the Hadex Anomaly, and the Hadex Anomaly is what you're gonna get. Now, we already made a surprising 6 episodes on the Hadex Anomaly and its places, so there isn't a huge amount of lore left, but there is still enough for a couple of episodes. Thus, today we're going to describe several demon worlds of the region, which are not lore-rich enough to warrant their own episodes, but they are still interesting tidbits of lore. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first of these hellholes we're gonna describe today is known as Bulwark. Once upon a time, a proud fortress world, guarding the original sector capital planet of Veronus, Bulwark was claimed by the worshippers of Korn. Unlike on Vancruus, another demon world we're gonna get to in a moment, the warp itself did not mutate this planet. Instead, all the atrocities that were committed in the years following the appearance of the anomaly were perpetrated by its own citizens. Once, mighty bastions of adamantium and steel were standing firm against the enemies of the Imperium. But now these structures have turned into charnel houses, the inhabitants constantly offering up sacrifice to the Blood God. Where proud Aquilas once stood over the buildings of the Munitorum, now sit the flesh hounds of corn perched and waiting for the chance to satiate their eternal hunger with the blood of those that offend their master. Skulls, both human and otherwise, decorate every single outcropping. Walls are lined by spikes, and the aqueducts pump a never-ending stream of blood into the seas. While these crimes are definitely despicable, the greatest atrocity was saved for the Grand Temple of the God Emperor. The once beautiful stained glass windows, once multicolored and depicting scenes of the Emperor's glory, are now stained only by the blood of the priesthood who had kept faith in Bulwark's darkest hour. The skulls of the priesthood were taken from their bodies and placed in a mound at the front of the altar. The altar itself, previously depicting a scene of Sebastian IV touched by the hand of the Emperor, has now been twisted to show the saint killing the emperor with an axe. Behind the altar is now a throne of bronze, stained red with the blood of those used to appease their patron. And upon it sits the lord of the planet, a demon prince called Krakiota. With a juggernaut of corn on either side, Krakiota hears the pleas and supplications of his minions. Those he deems worthy are offered the ultimate reward. Their life's blood is taken from them and poured into a goblet made from the skull of the former planetary governor. The goblet is then blessed and offered directly to the blood god himself, in the hope that he will bring victory and bloodshed to his warrior worshippers. The second world of today is known as Magog, or Magog, I guess. Magog is a verdant fortress world found in the Jericho Reach mutated by continuous contact with the warp energy emanating from the Hadex Anomaly itself, making it a main recruitment ground for the Stigmatus Chaos Cult. The Magog system has been drawn into and exited from the Hadex Anomaly several times in the millennia since the disturbance first appeared. These transitions obviously had a significant effect upon its only inhabitable planet, and those that dwelt upon it. Once upon a time, this was a stable agri-world, filled with citizens loyal to the Emperor and to the Imperial Creed. Nowadays, it is a breeding ground and a training center for the forces of corruption extending into the Jericho Reach. The planet's environment and indigenous life all bear the taint of the warp. Rivers that were once filled with water are now filled with blood. Much of the plant life, including some that was harvested for food, is predatory, and feeds upon those who tend it. Catacans would definitely feel right at home. The surface of the planet ebbs and flows, as though the entire world draws breath. 
land masses, even the mountain ranges migrate on a whim and are often subsumed beneath the world's surface, only to emerge days or even decades later in an entirely different place. In addition to those surviving humans, the planet is also rife with creatures of the warp. The foul demons closely interact with the tainted humans, breeding mutants and providing a near endless supply of soldiers for the forces of the Dark Gods. The mortals are constantly driven to commit acts of debauchery and cruelty in their service. In spite of these constant acts of wanton destruction though, Magog remains a crucial asset for chaos. For unknown reasons, the planet's environment has consistently remained capable of sustaining life and an abundant agriculture. Although the foodstuffs are hideously deformed and corrupted, the world's fields are constantly tilled and harvested by many slaves. Ironically, the productivity of this planet far exceeds many actual agri-worlds of the Imperium. This bounty in both food and manpower is likely the reason for the system's great defenses, and very few vessels which are sent to scout the system return from that mission. Reports have also indicated that there are substantial orbital emplacements, one of which has been tentatively identified as a Blackstone Fortress. The Stigmatus cult actively recruits from the population of Magog. There are many reports that traitor marines are active in the Magog system, or at least moving in the region. The extent of their involvement is not clear, but they may be recruiting new traitor space marines from the native population too. The many uses of Magog clearly dictate that it should be a priority target for the Achilles Crusade to retake the Jericho Ridge. However, until extra assets can be allocated, it is virtually impenetrable. The third world of today is known as Vancruus. Once upon a time, this was also a lush and beautiful agri-world, the main producer of many large grains for the Imperium's ancient Jericho sector. Now it is twisted and warped by the rotting touch of Nurgle, Vancouver's now producing plants which are used to create vile poison and hallucinogenic drugs. Wanting to create a planet more to his liking, the Plague Father pushed the land masses together until out of nine he created three. The next step was to move the clouds out of the way so that all could look upon the glory of this creation. The clouds were then moved towards the pole and turned a shade of pink so as not to distract the eye from the crowning achievement. The seas themselves, once a beautiful shade of blue, were now green with pus. Any wildlife that survived the change found itself mutated in new ways, which spread the unholy plague to every corner of the planet. The human population was the hardest hit of all, as usual. Those that staunchly refused the benedictions of the grandfather were actually the lucky ones. They were just executed, while those that quickly turned to worshipping the great disease father found themselves rewarded with a kind of leprosy. Their limbs would quickly atrophy and die over a period of seven days, but on the eighth day the limbs that were lost would begin to grow again. The cycle repeats for eight solar months out of the year, but in the ninth month the regeneration does not stop at simply regrowing the limb. During that month, the limbs become bloated and grotesque mockeries of what they once were, until the last day of the month when they literally explode, spreading the plague upon anyone who might not already have it. Finally, the fourth and final world of today is known as Coronen. When the Hadex anomaly originally popped up in real space, it was Tsinch, the changer of ways, who claimed the feral planet of Koronen as his own. The changes that the Chaos God brought were subtle in the beginning. Trees would sway when there was no wind, roads no longer led at the same point, and many small bizarre differences. The superstitious human tribesmen of the planet turned to their mystics and soothsayers for answers but the only answers they got were to accept the changes as a sign of their god. Over several years, children born to the tribes were mutated. Some would have an extra limb, others would just have eyelids that close from the side. 
In an effort to appease their god who protected them from the angry red scar in the sky, the people of Koronen venerated these changed ones and made them leaders of their tribes. It wasn't until two generations later that the tribes finally received a direct sign of their deity. When a demonic avatar of Tsinch finally revealed itself to the people of Koronen, it did so with the typical Tsinchian flair for the theatric. Shrubbery grew into a maze which followed every step of the demon. The leaves of every tree that the demon passed fell from their branches and they were replaced by perfect replicas made of unholy fire. Rivers switched the direction that they flowed every time they were crossed. It wasn't until the demon reached the biggest tribal settlement on the planet that the people truly understood what the god was capable of. The demon looked upon its worshippers and pointed to a small boy. This boy, somehow, had escaped the corrupting touch of the warp and was physically sound and unharmed. The boy strode up to the demon and kneeled before it. The creature placed a single claw upon the boy's head and said a few words in an unspeakable tongue. With a flash of violet fire, the boy was turned from a perfect human specimen into a horror of change. From that day forward, the people of Koronen offered heaps and prayers unto this avatar of their master, the Changer of the Ways. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these demon worlds of the Hadex Anomaly for today. There are a few bits of lore from this region left, involving planets which are not demon worlds, so I will return to those at some point in the near future. Did you know about any of the demon worlds described today? Which one did you find the most interesting and why? Definitely share your thoughts, opinions or questions, if you got any on this topic, in the comments below as always. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.